Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story comes from our very own subreddit, r slash Mark Narrations from Throwaway Grey Station, who says... Am I the arsehole for icing my friend out after he tried to police my social media postings and constantly made it a point to remind me that I'm not in shape? I, 23 female, was friends with Josh, 21 male, whom I only met about 8 months ago in college, and we immediately hit it off. He especially gave me a lot of support after my ex broke up with me, reasons unrelated to Josh. I started posting more often on my stories, mostly about funny memes and occasionally selfies of me trying out looks that I really enjoyed. After I posted a story of my gym access card, no personal info was on the card, only the gym logo, then it's time to do something for myself. Josh messaged me privately saying, okay, you don't have to post everything on your story, lol. He went on to say that I should only post good moments on my page and, and that when I achieve an amazing body, then that'll be something worth posting. I was taken aback because one, it's my page, and two, although he said I can post whatever makes me happy, he kept going on about how it's better to follow his method of posting. He jokingly decided that I need a social media manager so he can monitor what is or isn't worthy of posting. Basically went through my entire Instagram page and even asked why I still have my post about my UMAP preparation. To give more context, Josh is a Christian and doesn't really post on his social media. He's also commented on my body on how I haven't reached my full potential multiple times. At its worst, he would mention it at least once a day. I've set boundaries with him since that although I understand where he's coming from and that I agree that I'm not in the best shape that I can be, I don't appreciate him constantly mentioning it in every conversation. He knew I battled an eating disorder for years during my teens. He had apologized and backed off from it mostly until this happened. I almost immediately distanced myself and we went from talking almost every day to almost no contact. Josh pointed out that he noticed a significant drop in conversation, but I brushed it off. He texted me a couple of times asking when I'm free, but I always find a reason to end the conversation ASAP. I understand to an extent on where he's coming from as I get he's trying to tell me things from a different perspective and how what I post could seem desperate to my ex. My ex and I never unfollowed each other. However, him telling me what he thinks about what I post in addition to the body comments makes me feel very uncomfortable. I felt that he cared more about getting his point across over respecting the boundaries I've set. I would perfectly understand if he started this conversation if I was consistently posting about the breakup or sad things, but this was not the case. I've since removed him as a follower. So, am I the arsehole? For pulling away and we do have a couple of updates to this post as well which op kindly gave us now, as i was reading this and you know he's trying to get you to like seek his approval i can't remember the exact word that it is a form of like manipulation where they try to get you to seek their approval i'll google it after this but to me it just sounds like you've come out of a breakup and you've started to move on do stuff for yourself and sort of empower yourself in some ways going back to the gym doing what you want to do for yourself which you know more power to you i think and i would like to think as a friend if i was your friend in this situation i'd be bigging you up i'd be like yeah you know what fair play to you i know that you've just gone through this breakup so you do you you post as much as you want on your social media it's none of his bloody business to be quite honest you said that you understand to an extent where he's coming from well to be quite frank you shouldn't you said it's a different perspective it's a wrong perspective and the worst thing which absolutely infuriated me i know people with eating disorders and to say that to someone who's been who's gone through an eating disorder in the past is absolutely disgusting that can be so damaging and it could potentially set someone back to square one but absolutely you are not the asshole for pulling away in this situation but Genevieve says, not the arsehole. Tell him he still hasn't reached his full friend potential and you don't want him until he does because you only engage with people worth engaging with. Miss Murderpants says, not the arsehole. People like that seem to be energy vampires. Anacolade says, not the arsehole. 
Shut up, Josh. If I wanted to hear an asshole talk, I'd fart. <laughs> oh, amazing. I'm such a child. It's all you ever need to say. Post what makes you happy, not what some tactless moron tells you you should post. If he has nothing actually constructive to say, he just needs to be quiet. A silent fool is always better received than a loud one. Opie says, Oh man, I wish I was clever enough to say that to him at the time, lol. I'll be posting an update maybe in the next day, and once I get the final verdict. I'm posting part one first, so people can get the full context. Exquisite, Gerbil says, not the arsehole. He's not trying to show you a different perspective. He expects you to see the light and accept that his opinion is the one and only irrefutable truth. He is rude, treating you as lesser with the I know best attitude, and you're being way too understanding. The comments about your body are far over the line. He does not have a point. It doesn't matter if the comments are technically correct. They are incredibly rude and damaging. Sounds like he's trying to chip away your self-confidence with little digs disguised as advice. I'm seeing red flags that he may be controlling. Maybe he's just an obnoxious buffoon who just thinks he knows best, but it could be that he's taking the first steps to get you to compromise away your boundaries. If so, be on the lookout for over-the-top apologies and love bombing, not necessarily romantic love, to close the recent distance. Decent Pair says, Josh is negging you. That's the word I was looking for. It's a well-known psychological manipulation technique aimed at lowering your self-esteem and triggering you to seek their approval. Narcissistic people are predators who instinctively know how to push your weakest buttons and feed on your self-doubt, anger and attention you give them. The only way to win that game is not to play. Ghost Josh, he's not your friend. So OP gave us an update post and said, hey, it's me again. Yesterday, I posted to ask if I was the arsehole for icing out my friend Josh after he attempted to police my social media postings and patronize my body. I went to bed soon after and holy crap, I did not expect to wake up to my phone being blown up. The amount of not the arsehole and supportive comments were overwhelming and I thank each and every one of you. I also saw some FHQs I would like to clarify. One, I saw someone ask why I posted in a few threads about the same topic. From past experience, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get a lot of feedback in one single thread. Hence, I tried it out as I've seen a couple of people do it. I also had issues with accidentally violating community rules because my post is relationship related. My attempts to post on the actual Am I the Arsehole community has all ended in instant or delayed removals. I didn't expect this post to blow up to the extent it did. 2. Many of you guys mentioned Josh's actions as negging and secretly liking me. Even if all of what I said never happened, I've never and will never like Josh romantically. I don't know whether it's his intention to mold me into having an amazing body so he can date me. If that's what he's trying to do, that's very appalling and it only solidifies that I would never let anything beyond friendship happen between us. 3. Josh and I are schoolmates and we study the same course in college. So I feel that it's not in my best interest to block him unless he tries pushing my boundaries again. My Instagram account is private and I've already removed him from my followers list, so he no longer has access to what I post. This is also the only social media that he has of me. 4. I dropped him. I'm simply asking if my actions were justified and just want validation that I'm not overreacting to this. Now onto the update. Three weeks ago, Josh texted me asking if I was mad at him as he noticed he wasn't hearing from me. I initially left him on red, but eventually decided that it was time to lay everything out. I typed up a few long texts on how the past conversations really annoyed me and made me very uncomfortable. Whether he sees it or not, he completely overstepped his place as a friend with the comments on my body. I told him that he crossed the line multiple times even after I stated that I want him to stop. And regarding his social media comments, if no one asked for his opinion, he should keep his thoughts to himself. I also stated the fact that the number of times he commented on my body in a month far exceeded how many times my dad would mention it in an entire year. He apologized for making me feel that way explaining that he got too comfortable and recognized he hurt me with his comments. He explained himself as only trying to encourage me, especially seeing how hurt I was from the breakup. From how he worded his apology, I think he still doesn't realize that the real reason the friendship ended was because he disrespected my boundaries and not just because of his comments. I thought about explaining further, but no longer can I be bothered to argue with him. We made an agreement to stay civil in school and to continue helping each other out with studies. 
but that from now on I want no conversation with him outside of academics. Coming to the decision to call him out was very difficult as I'm a very non-confrontational person. I'm usually someone who just lets the friendship fizzle out by itself. Never have I ever full on put a friend in their place and dropped them out like that. But I had a feeling that he would keep trying to get an answer from me so I just went fuck it. Although I'm so relieved for finally getting everything out and that he didn't try to put up a fight. Part of me still feels sad about it as we were once best friends. It also sucks to lose a boyfriend and a friend within a six month time frame. There were times when I wondered if I went too far by severing almost all ties with him. If this was worth ending a friendship for. I ended up coming to terms that it wasn't his comments that I found offensive. It was that I set a clear boundary for him and he chose to ignore and forget about it. I also feel that he was projecting his standards on me. That showed me he prioritized getting his point across over respecting my wishes. And to me, his intentions are irrelevant because of this. I always make it my first priority to respect my friend's boundaries once they mention it on me. Once they mention it to me. And I'm slightly disappointed in myself that I let Josh go on for a couple of months before I decided to pull away and eventually cut him off. I will always appreciate Josh for giving me support after my breakup but I now have zero confidence that he respect any boundaries I try to put up in the future. We'll have to see him when college starts again in two weeks, fingers crossed that he doesn't try to push anything, as any attempts will earn him a block on all my methods of contact. We'll update anything significant happens. For now, I'm lucky to be surrounded with friends and acquaintances who appreciate me for who I am, and I've never been happier. I'm also thankful that I gained the awareness and self-confidence to recognize abnormal behaviors and to not tolerate anyone who's disrespectful towards me. Once again, a big thank you to all for reading my posts and also a thank you for all the supportive and savage and hilarious comments, lol. I wish the best in life for all of you. So OP comes in with, which they're calling their final update. The first paragraph of it, they just give a summary of what happened then shares links to part one and two and then says, after cutting Josh off, we did not speak at all for over a month. I'm not going to lie, it was really hard. Especially after the grief of the friendship breakup hit. Josh and I were very close. We essentially had a big sister, younger brother relationship. I had to get used to him no longer being one of the first people that I decide to share a personal milestone or even just a meme with. During the first week of school, we did not even make eye contact and he sat far away from me during the lectures. This was a stark contrast to us always sitting together and laughing about random shit. Part of me was relieved that he was finally respecting the boundaries I put up, but it also stung knowing how close we once were. After taking that month to process everything and based on our past interactions, I knew he very likely didn't have any malicious intentions when he said those things to me, but was just unfortunately extremely ignorant and oblivious to how he was acting. After talking to a friend about everything I'd been feeling, I decided to reach out to Josh and ask to talk in person after class. I missed my best friend. I missed the dynamic of our friendship. I knew his attitude will be a crucial factor in determining whether we can be friends again. If we reconcile, I can forgive but not forget. And if we don't, this would have been good to close the chapter on my part. Josh had already had an inkling of what I wanted to talk about. He explained that after we stopped speaking, he understood how badly he fucked up and how out of line he was. When his co-workers learned of what he did, they ripped him apart asking why on earth he would do that to me. That made me smile because I'm glad his co-workers actually think with their heads instead of their asses. I told him while I'm hurt by what he did to me, our friendship meant a lot to me and after seeing that he's genuinely remorseful, I think we can move past this. I also acknowledged that I could have handled the situation better by immediately confronting him instead of giving him the cold shoulder for two months before saying anything. We agreed that hard boundaries need to be set and if he criticizes my body again or breaks any more boundaries, the friendship will immediately be terminated. I told him that it will take time for me to trust him again and for the friendship to return back to the way it was or if ever. He understood and was glad that I was willing to talk to him again. As I said before, I'm usually someone who never looks back once I cut the cord. However, I made my first exception considering Josh and I had such strong sibling-like bond and seeing him take accountability for his actions. We're nowhere near back to normal yet, but at least we can get along well and not have things be awkward in school again. For now, I will remain cautiously optimistic. For those who followed my story from part one, I thank you all for your support. So far, Josh has been very respectful of my boundaries and we promise to immediately communicate if we accidentally overstep 
any unspoken boundaries. Hopefully I won't have to make a part four, so this will be it. Signing off and best wishes to all of you. Now, of course, I've read this in the space of a few minutes, so this has all happened very quickly for me. So my first thoughts are, I, I still don't like Josh. Personally, you mentioned your eating disorder and, and he talked about your body like that. I've seen the damage comments like that can cause. And that's just a bridge too far for me and it, that's not forgivable. But, you know, this is your life and you need to lead it and you need to deal with it in the best way possible. You're putting up boundaries again. Another thing that rubbed me the wrong way in this is that, you know, when this co-worker learned of what he did, they ripped him apart and asked him why on earth he would do that to me. Of course, why wouldn't anyone? But it still required you to go up to him to talk this out. Can people change? Will your friendship work? Potentially, who knows? And, and I truly hope that he does learn his lesson. He is remorseful for this because the alternative is he gets comfortable again and does it again, which I really hope it doesn't go down that path for you, OP. But a couple of the top comments after this one, Firefly says, I hope this all works out for you. I know you said Josh has taken accountability for his actions, but this doesn't really come across in any of the three posts. In quotes, he explained that after we stopped speaking, he understood how badly fucked up and how out of line he was. When his co-workers learned of what he did, they ripped him apart, asking why on earth he would do that to me. Firefly continues, I noticed that he needed other people to point out what he had done. He didn't seem to come to that conclusion himself, even after you explain how he made you feel. Please continue to expand your friend group. Don't just rely on this guy. Opie says thank you for your advice. I think he realized it after I finally told him. His co-workers' reactions were just further confirmation on that. And yes, I do have lots of other friends other than him. I'm optimistic but still cautious as we only talked not so long ago. I will be observing to see if his actions align with his words. Ferromancer says... There's a song I really like that goes, if it weren't for second chances, we'd all be alone. That being said, it has to be on your terms, not his. I'm glad to hear that he's got an idea of how badly he messed up in this. It's also very good to hear that you're being resolute and strong in your boundaries. A second chance is a gift that we should be careful giving out. Not everyone deserves it. I hope things work out with your friend. But before we move on to another story, I just want to say, OP, thank you for sharing your story on our subreddit and i truly hope whatever path you take going forward it works out for you as you deserve it but now i turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below let's have another story and our next story comes from the am i the arsehole subreddit it does have like a little update attached to it it's from no job 7202 who says am i the arsehole for proving to my boyfriend the nerds never cared about the popular kids in high school. My boyfriend and I, both 25, went to the same high school. My boyfriend was talking about our high school days. He thought high school me would have been thrilled to date the popular guy because I was a nerd. Mind you, we're 25 and it's 2024. I played along for a bit until I realized he wasn't joking. He literally thought that. I told him that I didn't know he existed. He was surprised and said, he was a popular kid. He played football and was in the popular crowd. He said, I must have been lying. I told him the nerds never cared about the popular kids in high school because we were fiercely competing amongst ourselves for college admissions. For a backstory on our town, my boyfriend was born and raised there, but I moved when I was 13, along with a bunch of other high achieving kids. That's because an engineering company opened up a branch near that town and brought in a ton of engineers and their families. So it was a sleepy town with a big high school that suddenly got a ton of competitive kids. And I mean insanely competitive. Nobody had time to think about popular kids or really anything but college admissions. I was only getting four or five hours of sleep a night regularly. Sports like football or cheerleading, which required five days a week training at school, were out of the question. And I saw the same people regularly because we we're all in the same classes. So all of the drama was contained within that group of 50 to 100 or so students. It paid off for me. I got into a top college and had no student loans. It was literally cheaper than the state school. And despite my auto-generated username, I do have a good job that I enjoy. My boyfriend said that I'm lying. I don't like being called a liar. So I literally reached out to all my high school nerd friends and yep, they didn't know the popular group and the ins and outs of the dynamic like my boyfriend thought. 
A few people recognized some names, but like I said, we were really focused on competing with each other. He got quiet when I proved my case. He said I humiliated him and I proved my point and we should never mention high school again. I talked with his sister and she said that high school was a special experience for him and I ruined his memories. Am I the asshole? And as I said, OP made like an update within the same post, replying to some of the comments basically. Um, but I noticed the top comment straight away and it said peaked in high school and I didn't notice this was like kind of a, a thing. I understand what it means obviously, but Nick says not the arsehole. I won't echo the peaked in high school thing because while it may have an echo of truth, I also think it's reductive. I think it's more important for your boyfriend to realize that the reason nerds bond together in places like high school and why weirdos slash nerds slash freaks slash geeks self-identify as such despite implied social stigma is that it's a conscious act of defiance against the notion that their self-worth is solely defined by their dominant social hierarchy. OP says, I'm going to be really honest here. It was not about defiance in any way for us. In fact, we played more heavily into a social hierarchy measured by the prestige of your college and perceived pathway. It was a very competitive and unhealthy environment. The reason I or other people didn't care about popular kids or freaks or weirdos because they weren't competitors. If my boyfriend was a student athlete who had great stats, we would have all have known and cared. It's not a good thing, but it's the reality of many high achieving students in high schools. Constant Gold says, ugh, not one of those peaked in high school kids who always want to talk about it. What does high achieving you see in him? This scenario is the basis for many cheesy movies based on high school. Opie says he's got a ton of qualities that I love. He definitely consumes too many cheesy movies, but I can't complain when he loves romance movies. Maybe more than me. E.K. Blay says no one's an asshole here. I think being popular in high school gave him an ego and everyone in his circle knew him. Clearly this wasn't the case as you and others didn't. Those circles don't really mix anyway. Outside of him calling you a liar, which he should apologize for, it doesn't seem much of a big deal on either end. Opie says I don't think it's a big deal either way. I find it kind of funny that he knew who I was at least in senior year, but I didn't know who he was, despite his perceptions. So OP gave an update in the same post and said, update, this is crazy. I didn't expect so many wild replies. It's already on TikTok. <laughs> I knew my boyfriend isn't a loser still stuck in his glory days in high school. So I talked to him and asked why he was upset at me not knowing him in high school. Well, he told me he did have a passing hallway crush on me, mustache, eye bags, and, and all which was flattering to hear. He felt defensive because I felt... I kind of stomped all over his daydreams of fleeting thoughts of each other. He also literally thought I was lying because he knew of me and he thought wrongly that I would know of him. I hate being called a liar, which made me go on the warpath. Don't worry, I didn't tell my friends why I was asking about my boyfriend's friend group, but they'd probably figure it out. He apologized and we hugged it out. Honestly, these comments were really wild. People were salivating over my boyfriend being this apparent loser jock character. I wasn't making a statement about anything. My boyfriend and I just ran in different social groups, neither better nor worse than the other. Well, maybe mine was slightly more toxic. We had different social experiences with good and bad points. I can't believe the number of stereotypes about nerds, which I never considered myself, lol, or popular kids in these comments. I was definitely not taking a social stance by not noticing the popular kids. They weren't in my radar. I missed way more days of school than my boyfriend for competitions for my clubs. As a boring person, I didn't have any drama, but I witnessed a lot. There were always parties and sneaking around, but there was always this undercurrent of stress that dominated my school life. I don't regret high school and I'm grateful for the opportunities and experiences, but I don't want to go back. I'm not better or worse than my boyfriend because of my high school experience. We're all just people at the end of the day. And... I kind of like that update. It's not massively dramatic and, you know, OP's just saying, you know, we've all, we're all people with our backgrounds and OP says themselves, they're not particularly happy about their past and they can see that, you know, in some ways it was toxic themselves. So it was nice to see that, you know, they just hugged it out in the end and, and hopefully can move past it because I, I personally couldn't see them breaking up over this, but I don't know. What do you guys make of this? situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time and just just a random off comment here 
Uh, we talked about a lot about grief yesterday in yesterday's video, and I've had some wonderful messages come my way sharing your stories as well. I just want to personally thank you for those. It's one of the, the big things to come out of this channel, and the more and more that it goes on is talking about my past experiences and, you know, people sharing theirs and, and how sharing with each other can can help out in some ways which I, is just absolutely amazing for me so thank you so much and i will see you in the next one take care and much love